OK, so let's begin. I can see a few more of you have come in, so that's great. Right, OK, so we are starting. Now, um, what we're going to talk to you about today is ways you can leverage artificial intelligence in your marketing strategy. Now, my name, for those of you that don't know me, is Lou Peck, and I'm the Managing Director and Founder of the International Bunch. So the first thing that we're going to cover first is just a very brief agenda. Now, um, this is a webinar. I can't see you. I can't hear you. But if you do want to chat to me about anything, then please do put it in the chat box or in the Q&A area. If there's anything that I can't answer during this session, then I will happily pick those up separately with you at the end. Um, as I mentioned before, sadly, um, this is not being recorded or shared out through YouTube or Facebook because Zoom is just not playing ball with me. So I will manually add it. And after this, you will receive a link to the recording, but also to any other additional resources that we might talk about through the sessions. I'm, I'm going to do a poll to assess who exactly we've got on the session so I can ensure that we're tailoring the content specifically to the audience that's here. And I'm going to talk to you about the artificial intelligence definition. Um, we're going to look at why AI, how it can help, examples of it, um, specifically six actionable ways to leverage AI. And we will create this into a blog post as well. Um, industry examples. Um, we'll also look into AI workflow in terms of where you can actually add AI in. And Finally, we'll finish with working in harmony and if we need to address any questions and answers. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, my name's Lou Peck. I'm Managing Director of the International Bunch. We're a scholarly comms consultancy. We effectively specialize in that area. Um, we have three core services, advisory services, marketing services, and progressive thinking. In terms of myself presenting to you today, I'm Chair of ALPS Membership and Marketing Committee um, which sits mostly on the publisher and society side. And then I'm also chair of Silip Cymru Wales Committee, which is a local information professional or library committee here in Wales. So I actually get to um, spend time on each end of the spectrum, which is fascinating. I'm also a Alps and a Business Wales mentor, or mentor for them both. And I've been in the industry for about 20 years. Okay, so... I'm now going to ask you a poll, a quick poll, and that is going to be, um, I'd like to ask you which option best describes where you work. So um, are you a consultant? Do you work for a funder, government, library or information professionalism? Um, are you a service provider for libraries or publishers? Um, are you society um, or other? And if you're on the publishing side as well, um, then it would sit in the service provider side. Okay, great. You can see that those are coming in now. Okay, so actually we've got quite a mix going on here. Uh, I'm just going to give it a couple more moments. Right. So, yeah, we've got a, a mix going on here, um, but I do have lots of um, good examples to talk to you about. So hopefully everyone will get um, quite a bit out of this. And remember, do ask me any questions that you want. Um, just pop them in. Don't be like me and say, oh, I'll wait till the end and then I forget what I was going to ask. OK, so the first thing I want to talk about is the definition of artificial intelligence or otherwise known as AI. Um, when we're specifically here looking at marketing and also AI led marketing is another term. Um, artificial narrow intelligence is one that is a part of it that specifically focuses with marketing. So it's all about leveraging the concept and the model of artificial intelligence or AI, which I'm going to practically refer to it most of the time now, such as um, machine learning. And also we've got the Bayesian network, which is um, a model of how you can do it to ultimately achieve marketing goals. And so the reasoning is performed by a computer and algorithm instead of human. But what I will say here, it's really important that the human connection is there because without that, you can't drive forward what the artificial intelligence needs to be doing. And data is absolutely essential for AI. 
So one of the most critical challenges embracing marketers today and also in the future, in the next five years, is AI. Now, you may find that AI is in everything that you're looking at or that you're using without even realizing it. So our needs as individuals are unique and complex. Now, I know from those that are attending this session and from the type of organizations that you're working from, you're working with um, end users who are authors, who are researchers, but you're also working with those who are librarians or who are those who are working in the industry. So it's thinking about how can you specifically address those needs? There is no one size fits all approach. Now gone are the days of mass, mass marketing. It's now about niche engagement. And this is very much the case as well in social media. It's about targeting those people that are specifically interested in what you want to talk to them about, what resonates with them and how you can get them to engage with you. It's not about sending out communications to thousands of people and having engagement that will say, oh, I had, a, I had an open rate in my emails of 1% because I sent it actually 10,000 people, well, that's great. And I had a click through rate of 0.1%. Actually, that's not great. What you want to have is to send your communications to more people or to the people specifically that are interested in it and that are more likely to open your emails and then click through. Because also what you may end up doing is annoying people and they'll just opt out and you've lost them. So it's really thinking about how can you segment your audience? Now, 55% of senior marketers across the industries are already using AI in some different capacity. And there will be certain industries that are certainly using it a lot more. And as I go through specific examples, you're probably thinking, oh, I didn't know that they were doing that. Or yeah, I know they do that. I know what that's for. 72% um, of marketers think AI is a business advantage. I mean, why wouldn't it be? And I don't know why that figure is not greater, to be fair. But of course, it's relative dependent on who they asked. Um, AI is expected to have a $2.6 trillion worth of impact on sales and marketing. So that's massively significant. Now, we talked about why. So let's talk about the how can it help. It can analyze vast amounts of data, identify trends and predict patterns. But note, and I mentioned this for the definition, it needs data. Without this data, artificial intelligence can't do what it is that you want it to do. And also you want to anticipate what your customer's next move is. Where are they gonna be in the customer journey? How can you improve that customer journey? So you want to obtain actionable insights for real improvements and better customer engagement. And I talked about that just before, about improving the engagement that you have with your recipients. You want to help understand who your target audience really is. Now, we have done a masterclasses recently where we've done like a storytelling masterclass and this we actually turned into training that we now offer. Um, but there, um, we had a masterclass that was available. Once we actually turn them into training, the video disappears out of public view. But if you did register for the session like you registered for this one, you always have a link that's going to take you to this content. So it's definitely worth registering for these webinars so they don't disappear and you can't access them on YouTube. Um, but for example, we've done storytelling masterclasses. We've done ones about inclusivity and um, including that kind of messaging in your communications, thinking about who the people really are. But it's about the story that you're able to tell and what words really resonate better with that target audience. And of course, that can really depend on what type of person they are. It can depend on their background. It can depend on their culture. And it can also depend on what type of work that they do. But how can you strengthen your human connection? And that's quite ironic when we're talking about AI, but it is about that marriage of how um, human and machine work together. So I want to give you some AI examples, and I've got several to go through here. Now, Netflix and Amazon, as examples, they provide content based on previous searches. Now, I'm just going to turn myself off for a moment so you get to see because Zoom pops me up in the top corner there. So. Um, they 
will, as an example, service providers will look at, they have algorithms that look at the previous searches that you've done and your purchases and your views to boost your personal experience effectively and what things are you really going to engage with and what do you want to watch. Of course, for Netflix, it's about how do we keep you coming back to Netflix to watch this content to keep subscribing. Whereas I've got an example here of my Audible, and this is about how that's exactly that same idea is how do they get me in there? But because Audible has an has an add-on where they have the um, books and podcasts and audiobooks um, which are available um, for me to buy, and so that's an add-on feature. When we look at the social media advertising, I mean, it's massively complex and different social media channels do things differently. But, you know, there's a saying where they say, you know, for every $2 um, you make um, as for every $1 spent on Google. So if I just say that again, the way that actually works, for every $1 spent on Google, then you can make $2. So that just shows the power of social media advertising. But social media advertising has got really quite savvy and smart. So I've just done an example here. I've started running recently and um, I was looking at um, vests that will make me stand out when it's dark because I live in quite a rural area. And also I was looking at dog vests and then I was looking at like masks as well that you can wear um, because I saw that some people are not too happy about people running and breathing a lot and because you know I, I, I will huff and puff a lot when I'm running so um, straight on it you know Facebook are there they've got all this advertising happening and um, I may have clicked through on an advert on here already and gone out or they know this from other things that I've been doing and the Under Armour stuff that comes from Google actually that was me doing some um, looking on Google um, you can draft email subject lines and social media content. There are services out there where you can type in to say, I want to um, have a blog post that's going to talk about this. Can you give me some headline ideas? There are free ones as well. HubSpot, uh, HubSpot do one. Um, but there are lots of free ones out there to give you an idea or to at least inspire you. And we have a blog post um, which has um, formulas in it for creating specific headlines if you want to. But that's something that you manually do rather than something that's more automated. Um, it'll help you to clean up your database, to dedupe your contacts, but also to record marketing intelligence, not just on your customers, but on your competitors as well. Um, Sky is an example, which is a very large media organization throughout the world. They gain deeper understanding of segments of their data and were able to customize their messaging for 22.5 million customers. So that's a massive data set that they're dealing with. Um, Grammarly, that's some, a service that we use. I use it for um, a lot of the time. It's great for saying, I want to write something that's gonna have an informal tone of voice or a formal tone of voice, a professional tone of voice. Um, I want it to write in a certain style and it'll give me pointers. And it also says to things to me like, well done, you've been practicing. And I'm like, yes, yeah, so I've done something right with my grammar. That's great. Um, but that's, a, that's another idea of a great tool that you can use as AI. So I want to talk about some real life examples as well as I'm going to cover those six points I referred to earlier. Now, if you're looking to synthesize your insights, Unilever, I've got an um, example of here. What they did is that through social listening, customer relationship management, and also through traditional marketing research, they were able to identify a link between ice cream and breakfast. I mean, who would have thought it, hey? So at least 50 songs in the public domain had the lyrics that talked about ice cream for breakfast. So what did they do? A little bit more delving, Dunkin' Donuts. They were already selling ice cream in the morning. Obviously, Dunkin' Donuts is a, um, is a US example here. So what did they do? They developed a range of cereal flavored ice creams with Ben and Jerry. Um, Amazon Personalized. So this is a service from Amazon that um, Domino's, for example, which is a large uh, pizza company, 
that they will use to um, help to give you choice and customization when you're looking at what pizzas that you want to have. So they give you um, a number of different options here of ways that you can automatically process and examine your data, but also identify what's meaningful. And that's really important when you're thinking about actionable insights that have value to them. Um, and then looking at the right algorithms. So that's an interesting when you look to see how um, Amazon do on a B to C scale, but then also what are they doing B to B? I have an example here of um, a video, which I thought was um, a quite fun one to show you. You don't need to have sound for this. But basically, this is just a video showing interactivity with an app. And then someone goes, oh gosh, oh, I like that buzz. Oh yes, I wonder how that would look in my home. Oh, oh, so if I put my bars here, oh, look at this, it detects the, yeah, great, place it there, yep. Yeah. Oh, look how fabulous my bars look there. Oh, no, I don't like it there. But it's really interesting to see how um, artificial intelligence and machine learning and also augmented reality can partner together to create this kind of experience. And then suddenly you're like, oh, I can take a picture with that. And I can uh, message this and say, hey, what do you think of this? So that's just a nice example there. Okay, so moving on from that. Oh, interesting. That hasn't happened before. Um, bear with me a moment while I just uh, have a little, um, there we go. See, it has to start again, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, there we go. Right. So that was a really nice example. And also it uh, shows you YouTube and what happens when you insert a video into your PowerPoint presentation and then accidentally press something and go into YouTube while you're sharing your screen. Thank goodness there was nothing bad on there. Well, not that I saw anyway. Um, so what we're gonna cover now is six actionable ways to leverage AI. Now I want you to pay attention because in a moment I am going to ask you a second question specifically on one of my examples. So it does mean a little bit of audience participation, please. Okay, so um, of the six, the first to talk about is an AI powered chatbot. Now I go on to services like um, my NatWest um, account when I'm doing my own personal business banking and um, Cora pops up and I went on there the other day to ask uh, to, to find something and I couldn't find something and I thought, oh, I'll try this. And actually the chat box sent me exactly where I wanted to go and it was super intelligent and it saved me time and I usually prefer to pick up the phone and speak to someone. So when we look at these chat bots, they're wildly, they're wildly use um, offering 24 seven support, which is really important when you work in a global space, um, is a conversation that's replicated at your customer's convenience, which is really important for them. And the more the bot learns about common FAQs, like it could be about payment, it could be about returns, whatever it is, the more it learns about the business and the smarter it becomes. Um, as an example, Starbucks have a mobile app and customers can order and pay for food just by speaking. And they can modify their order as if speaking to a real life barista. Um, the virtual assistant confirms where to order and how to pay. Now, um, when you look at services like um, the WeChat gateway that the Charlesworth Group offer, they've got a really interesting integration going on there where um, authors can actually see where their manuscript is in the process. And I was watching one of their videos earlier and it was really interesting seeing how an author can interact in a messaging service. So that's definitely something um, to check out. I think they were a finalist in, um, in the Outs Awards last year. So that's where I saw the video. It was really interesting. It was on their website, as in the Charlesworth Group's website. So when we look at use of AI, um, in content creation as well. Creating content can involve lots of research effort. Um, it's also about the collation of it and the dissemination across multiple platforms. And it's so labor intensive. So ultimately automation is gonna save time and it's going to offer a better return on investment and return on investment and measuring return on investment is essential. So examples of tools that can help here 
And this can also be like the tools I mentioned earlier, like um, HubSpot has a, um, a, a blog post and email subject line generator. But you've got ones like Wordsmith, Articulo and Quill, and they ultimately provide an end-to-end -end content creation services. And these are used by organizations like Forbes and the New York Times and BBC and um, Reuters as well. So if you look at the screenshot here, what we've got is an example where, um, what are the sort of topics that you're looking at? What kind of word count are you looking at? Do you have any preference? And they'll help you to create this content. So at least it's going to give you a draft of something. What I did find when I went into these um, subject generators, like a blog post subject generator or um, a, a email subject generator, um, some of them were very repetitive. I kind of went through 20, 30 of them. I just kept going and then noticed that they were really repetitive. So actually it just felt a bit like they were choosing, um, they said to me, what matters to you? And I put in some specific words and then they placed those words in and it was great to inspire me initially. But when I kept going through, because I will, I'll just, I want more and more and more ideas. Um, when it started duplicating the same ones, um, but they were slightly different, I thought, mm, no. Um, and if it was good enough, I would have paid for it. Uh, voice search on AI is um, really very adopted. I mean, you'll probably use that anyway. I've got, I can say her name because I've unplugged her now, but I have an Alexa here. She's often talking to me and annoying me, uh, but I do talk to her and ask her things. If you've got iPhone, you'll use Siri. If you've got Android, you'll be using um, whichever various ones you can use on Android or Google Assistant, depends on the make of the phone. Um, but 41% of adults use voice search at least once a day. I mean, we have, we have uh, probably about five or six Alexas in the house all over the place and a Google Assistant. And I've got one here in the office as well. So, um, I'm, I'm using them all the time. I'm asking Alexa things all the time. Um, and sometimes I wish I could do that when I'm in the car because I can't look on my phone and I want to ask something. So in 2020, 50% of smartphone users use voice technology on their device. Um, advances in AI and machine learning have had a huge impact on how we interact with our smart devices and how we search the internet now. So when we look at something like, and I mentioned this before, Google Assistant, that for example, will search for businesses in the local vicinity. So if you're looking for something specific, I want to find a dog groomer and it provides all the information. So if you're working on a beta, beta C side or um, specifically a service provider on a beta B side, then actually you probably want to be making sure that your site is optimized for with voice queries. And all you have to simply do is um, ensure that with Google My Business that you set up your landing page URL, your opening hours, your address, your images, and if you can get as many good reviews as possible, that helps significantly as well. And of course, that's only going to help your search engine optimization and um, help you in terms of your ranking where you're going to appear in search results. Of course, that's Google specific and Bing is another one to be thinking about. Um, AI and search engine advertising. So search um, advertising involves enormous amounts of data points and the choices. It's huge and audience segmentation criteria could be like location, age, gender and time. Um, and AI specifically targets customers using the required criteria that you have given. And it looks at areas like individual cookies and what's your browser history been you know, stuff that you don't think that or realize that you're sharing, you're sharing. So examples like LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook for their advertising, and certainly for Facebook, which is very advanced, um, you can use data analytics and create your own custom profiles to target and retarget your ads. You know, you can have a list of your customer data, which you can upload into Facebook to see if it can bring up any matches. And of course, with the retargeting comes funnels as well, which we're not going to go into today. Um, AI enabled ad copywriting. 
very similar to what we were talking about before. But this is about personalizing email subject lines, but also social advertising copy. So remember I said to you that I was going to ask you a question. So if you're listening and you're not watching, pay attention to the screen. If you're like me, because I usually have webinars on a screen over here and I'm working here. So um, here is an example of one that comes from Frazee and I Able Tool. Now, which of these two do you prefer? So you can either have the one on the left, which says treat yourself to the ultimate summer holiday in the sun, book your beach break now, or the one on the right is you definitely deserve a treat this summer. How about sun, sea and savings? So I'm now going to um, ask you this question. So which option do you prefer? Do you prefer the image on the left or do you prefer the image on the right? Now, I'm not going to tell you my preference just yet. OK, great. Just give you a couple more moments. Have a very little cheeky drink. OK, I like getting to about 30 seconds. I'm going to end polling now. Right, so I can see that. 100% of you said the one on the right. Which one do I prefer? The one on the right. Which one was done by the, uh, by the um, through AI? The one on the right. The one on the left was done, was written by a human. So it's really interesting to see that 100% of us prefer the one that's come out of AI. But of course, the one that came out of AI had to use something, the data initially, for it to create something. But it's very interesting to see how that works. Okay, so partnering with a specialist, this is really important. Um, and of course, you know, I, I could use us as an example here and we can write your content, of course we can. Um, but if you find a great service that saves you time and money and has got really good turn, return on investment that's automated, then you may use that and you may use a specialist like ourselves to fill in the gaps. But this is just an example here. And, you know, I mentioned the Charlesworth Group earlier as well because of how that they specialise. And they're very much in terms of their specialism in China, as well as other areas. So specialising with a partner or working with a partner is really important. Now, an example that I've got here is from Dell. Now, they had worked with a partner um, to actually create custom messaging dependent on what the consumer behavior was. So you can see here as examples that um, they actually had a 59% um, click through rate uplift and a 79% conversion uplift in the ones that they in the ones that they did just by changing the type of messaging that they were using to specifically the people that they were. Now some people may do this through personas as well. And the only thing I'll say about personas is that if you initially um, create personas of your target audience and you actually have real data that has come from your, um, from your community to ask them what their specific needs are, that'll be what their needs are at that certain time. But remember that our needs change. So you need to make sure that you have a mechanism in place that you are thinking about how do we ensure that we are updating what we're doing so that it remains current and that we're keeping this really good level of engagement. Um, so it showed you here um, for the email, but it also showed you for the Facebook ads and you had some like different points of view here and different messaging. So it's just really promising to see. And it demonstrates that when you segment out your marketing, you have custom messaging, how powerful that can be. And of course, there comes with that quite a bit of work. But if the return on the investment is better and you can automate things, it's a bit magic. OK, so predictive analytics. Um, this is where you look at historical data and also external data like cookies and history and searches and other type of activities. And you find patterns and behaviors. And so um, Aberdeen Group found that this increases average profit margin by nearly 5% per customer 
and also the customer lifetime value by 10% over non-users. So it's really interesting to see the effect that this can have. Now, the more that you know up front, obviously the better, the more successful you're going to be at targeting and messaging. However, things changed. We didn't think we were going to be in, in, a, in a pandemic, let alone still in a pandemic. Um, so you can't always predict everything, but to have enough data to give you an idea of what you can do is great. But also remember, you need to be agile. And this is an area that we do training in. So we do have um, a masterclass on agile, on working agile in our YouTube channel. And it's openly available for you to access. So it's about having an agile mindset so that you can easily shift to what's happening in the industry and stop doing what is not working. You have to be brave and you have to be bold because ultimately with an agile mindset, if you stop doing something you're traditionally doing for a long time because actually you measure it and you realize it's not working and you do something else, but that's even worse, then you can go back to what you were doing because that's what agile is being about. Um, I've got a couple of industry examples here. I've talked um, about a few as I've been speaking, but uh, uh, back in, I think it was 2000 and where are we now? I think it was about 2018, 2019. Springer Nature had created a book and it was the first type of book of their kind, which was generated specifically, well, it's machine generated and it had an overview of um, specific research. So this was by using an algorithm that they developed in collaboration. And it's really, really interesting to see that there's output starting to come out through AI in the industry that we're doing, not just through marketing in terms of, you know, what different activities that you can do, but how we're looking at our service providers and what they're doing and how we're connecting with our audiences. Um, 67 Bricks is another example. Um, this comes from their website. And this is a case study that you can read more on if you want to. And they've got lots of great information there, but I've just basically pulled out some specifics. But 67 Bricks is a um, company that works with people in the industry to create um, uh, solutions for platforms, et cetera, lots of different um, innovative um, solutions. So, um, I mean, I'm clearly not doing them justice because they do a lot of stuff, but you'll see how impressive they are as we talk through this. So what they did in um, Chemical Watch is that they worked with Chemical Watch to create semantic fingerprinting. And um, this was where you have a comprehensive metadata set for content for uh, the content user. And ultimately, it's to improve the content capabilities and to have a better user experience. Um, it examines each piece of content on Chemical Watch. And I must apologize for that spelling mistake I've got there. It's really bothering me now I've noticed it. And if you hadn't noticed it, well, you're sure gonna notice it now. And if you're not looking at your screen, you're sure gonna look at it now. Um, but yeah, so um, what it, what's really important here is that they look at content like news and features and third party PDFs and conference presentations. And they ultimately create this unique semantic fingerprint for that content. So basically metadata set. Um, so you could be looking at keyword extraction, for example. You could be looking at automatic identification of key information for customers. Um, machine learning, which is improving the identification of categories over time. So there's continuous work happening. The enriched content is then used to boost information discovery, but also product features. So it's not about just what it's doing now, but it's about what impact is this gonna have, have for us long-term as well. So the content can be repackaged, it can be customized, it can be remarketed in new ways. And that's really important when we look at our existing content and how we can remarket that content. Like if you have videos or if you've done webinars or presentations, are there areas of those that you can cut to create bite-sized chunks of more digestible content? Ones that you can use on social media, for example. And what's really important to remember is that when you use videos on social media, um, because it is the most dominant form of um, engaged content on social media, is that 85% of people will watch the video without sound. So make sure that you have some kind of um, subtitles come up. So improve search, um, they're looking to improve the discoverability and the personalization. 
they had 40% increase in repeatable revenues. I mean, that's fantastic. Um, it also powers internal efficiencies as well. So they're thinking, for example, about the future of auto tagging content, identifying newsworthy stories and trends, creating automated marketing emails. So it's when you have something, how can you further build on it as well? I mean, for, for those of us who work in small businesses and even for larger businesses, it's about the sustainable work that you can do. It's the sustainable practices that we're going to do so that we are around here for the long term as well. Um, well placed to deliver innovative products and services that meets the needs of the customers. So that's really important. But if you want to go and see more about that, um, go to their website. So the last thing that I just want to show you is we, we've talked about some of the examples here and we've talked about um, some specific examples of real life ones. But also when we're looking at a workflow, now, there are so many different ways that marketing teams will categorize where a customer is or where an end user is or where whoever your target audience is, where they are in the life cycle. Now, this specific image here shows reach, act, convert, engage. And that's what they feel um, is the life cycle that they're looking to do. So you want to reach them, you want them to act, you want to convert them and you want them to continue engaging with you. So thinking about loyalty and retention. And then what happens if they fall off? You know, where do you want to have them next? So when we're looking at this flow here, this workflow, it starts with smart content creation. So you could be thinking about thought leadership, uh, programmatic um, media bidding. So that is when you're looking at, it could be like advertising, for example, like Google advertising and bidding on certain keywords. Um, AI generated content, which we just showed as an example of a book, voice search as well. Um, and then moving on from the demand generation side and the purchase intent to them actually purchasing. So you've got uh, propensity modeling. So ad targeting specifically to what their needs are because you have a better idea now. Predictive analysis, lead scoring. Um, this is where you score them specifically and then you're able to group them. When you're looking to convert them, you're looking at retargeting them, you're looking at dynamic pricing, web and app personalization, chatbots as well. And chatbots it also sits with the retention, the loyalty side. Um, and then when you go over from converting to engage, you're looking at predictive customer service, you're looking at marketing automation, one-to-one -one dynamic content emails. I mean, marketing automation, especially when it comes to emails, is really important because whereas I'm working with um, a number of different teams across different types of organizations, there is just this obscene amount of pressure on the shoulders of people at the moment and the enormous output that they need to do. And it's not about working more, it's about working smarter. It's not about working harder, it's about working smarter and being more efficient in what you're doing and getting the most out of it. So actually, if ensuring that you have specific templates that are created and that are disseminated out with your tone of voice, with consistent language and messaging, that creates a really powerful and strong message. And it will also save you a lot of time and it'll also reduce the number of errors that there may be. But you can see that machine learning, propensity model and AI application all play such a part in this workflow here. Okay, so, we're coming to near the end of the presentation now, um, but what I'm going to talk to you now about is just working in harmony. So something that Marcos has said was marketers rely on big data and visualization tools to determine how to better understand customer needs and develop better products and services. Now, none of these tasks could be accomplished by AI without human guidance. And remember, I talked about that at the beginning. Conversely, human creativity and productivity have been enormously leveraged by this AI support, allowing to achieve better quality solutions at lower costs. So machines aren't here to take over the world. It's the human machine partnership that really matters and how responsible we are with that. And the goal is not to replace human creativity, but to embrace it, enhance it, make it more sophisticated, and ultimately take it to the next level. 
But I do remember if you have any questions, please do pop them in the chat box. If I'm able to answer them now, I will. If I can't answer them now, then I will address them with them separately. So um, the next webinar that we have from this um, series, because we do this on a monthly basis, uh, usually on the, about the same, I think it's the, where are we now? I think it's the second, the second Wednesday of every month. Um, so if you go to our website, um, internationalbrunch.com forward slash webinars, you'll find our listing of webinars. We usually only have a couple of a time because a lot of our content is um, requested by us of what our customers and what the community ask us to create for them, what they're interested in. So we don't always plan so much ahead. But the next one that we have is about becoming an email um, marketing superhero. So we'll give you specific hints and tips around email to improve the efficiency of your email that you're producing. Um, also, we have loads of resources. We are just about to relaunch our new podcast. Our blog has loads of great um, uh, posts in it, including one that we did recently with social media, um, the best times to post on social media, well, the four main social media that are used across the world, except in uh, China, um, where most of those are banned. And we didn't actually cover um, WeChat, but this is what Rick was requested for us. And we're not specialists in WeChat. We'd probably go and ask, um, a partner like the Charlesworth Group to help us with that because they'll have some excellent advice there. So um, we've got lots of really great resources and um, you'll also find our live webinars go on there, live, you know, when it happens. Very disappointed with Zoom. Um, just to note, you'll see that we have just added a whole load of Work Smarter virtual working tips videos. These are for those people who are working in a virtual environment there are exercises in there. We commissioned a um, local company in Cambridge in the UK to do these for us. And they're literally like strengthening um, and activating your upper back muscles. Like if you start getting cramp or RSI, what can you do? What exercises can you do? How can you set up your screen and your desk and stuff like that? So there's lots of really great videos that we've just literally added and we're, we're going to um, do a bit of a shout about very shortly. Um, but we've got lots of good stuff on the website. Um, I just mentioned those here are our live webinars and this webinar will go into our um, YouTube. And also we have lots of different um, hints and tips that we produce based specifically on certain either subject areas or um, platforms. So um, we have a new podcast that's going to be coming up very soon called Inspiring the Next CEO a CMO, I should say, sorry, Chief Marketing Officer. And this is where we're going to speak to people in the industry and hopefully inspire those in the community with um, lessons learned and how people have got to where they've got to. Um, also, we are have rebranded our podcast now called Behind the Fluff, because when you work in marketing, people laugh and say to you, oh, what do you do? And you say marketing, and they go, oh. And you go, oh. And they go, oh, was that like, you know, that's really fluffy, isn't it? And you're like, huh? So um, <laughs> it just, it does make me laugh. I just thought of an example of someone gave to me the other day. Um, so um, we've rebranded our podcast and we're going to have some really fun and exciting interviews, especially from people in the industry, um, talking about things that they're doing on a marketing perspective in their organizations. Um, so that's very exciting. And they're coming up very soon. Um, so. If you don't have any questions, because I haven't seen any questions come through yet, which is um, marvellous for me. I'll just double check. No, okay. Um, if you want to reach out to us directly, please contact us on team at internationalbrunch.com as well. It's an inbox that's monitored all the time. And so if you send me a specific message and you don't have my direct email address, then um, it'll be sent through to me. If there's anything we can help you with, please let us know. But I'd like to thank you so much for joining us. And finally, the last thing before you go that I want to say is that as we end this session, you will receive a link, a Survey Monkey link, automatically from Zoom, because of how Zoom's working today. Um, and so I've asked if you can rate this webinar and give any feedback, um, good or bad, we don't mind. Ultimately, we want to produce things 
that you want to see, want to hear, and anything we can do better, please let us know. So thank you so much for attending and I wish you all the best. Have a lovely rest of your day.